In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a, what's commonly known as a center overspring. A center overspring is fashioned from a small piece of piano wire, and what it does is um, allow you to switch a turnout just with the flick of your finger. This little spring will hold the switch points tight against the stock rail with nothing other than this tiny little piece. What we're going to use is a small piece of piano wire. Fast Track sells a line of piano wire that we've sourced out that is 37 thousandths of an inch in diameter. And we, we use that wire for the throw bar wire in our Bullfrog switch machines. And this is an under the table switch machine that mounts below the turnout. And we found that this spring, the spring action of this piano wire is just right for holding switch points nice and snug. It's also a good replacement wire for a tortoise switch machine. The center overspring needs to go through two small holes drilled in the movable throw bar tie and in a PC board tie that's behind the throw bar tie. The design of all our fast tracks turnouts will have a PC board tie directly behind the first head tie and this is in the perfect spot for putting in a center overspring. If you're going to do this with another brand of turnout you can do it um, I, I would recommend replacing one tie with a PC board tie because it gives you a lot more strength but you can also do it by drilling down through a plastic tie and if the turnout's already in place you can drill down through the tie and into the road bed and put the bottom of the spring down into the road bed which will hold it pretty secure. What is important is that we have the switch points centered in the full travel of the turnout when we do this. We want everything to be drilled and lined up from the center. And the best way to do that is just to put a couple of shims, uh, I'm using some scrap PC board tie, into between the stock rail and the switch points and adjust it so our switch points are sitting approximately in the center. You want it as close as possible. And we're going to drill two holes in the center of this tie and in the center of this tie, directly in line with each other. I'm going to mark that hole. Um, just with a simple straight edge, it could be a ruler, but this is just what I have lying around. And I'm just going to scribe a line in the center of those ties, like so, so I have them in line with each other. There we go. There we go now. Now you can see that there's a line uh, in there, approximately in the center of the tie. Now I'm going to drill a small hole in the center of the tie on that line. I'm going to use a uh, moto tool, a little handheld one, uh, cordless one I have here. The drill bit in this tool is 39 thousandths of an inch in diameter, just slightly bigger than the throw bar wire. Uh, that's what you want. You don't want a sloppy hole, otherwise this spring won't work very well. go there's a couple of holes right down clear those two ties next I'm going to form the piece of piano wire into the spring shape that we need to do this I'm just using an old pair of uh, in those pliers fairly hefty pair and we want to bend a simple bend like that and I'm going to go in you know an inch and a half or so up the wire we want about a 30 degree bend in the wire like that once that bend is formed, then we're going to go back to the turnout and use the turnout as a guide to put some marks on the wire where we need to put our other two bends. We want the bend of this wire to be right in between the two holes that we just marked. And you just do this by eye, like so. I'm just laying that on there and I'm going to take a sharpie and mark on the wire the location of the two holes. Right there and right there. I'm just doing this by eye. And get it as close as you can. Now you can see on the wire there's a couple of dots and those dots are exactly where these holes are in the throw bar tie and the tie behind it. Now what we're going to do is bend this wire perpendicular straight down. Now I'm going to hold the top of the wire like so with our mark right at the end of the jaws and just with my thumb bend it perpendicular. This wire is fairly easy to work with, so I'm just going to bend it down. We want a nice sharp bend on that wire. See, it's nice and accurate. 
Now I'm going to cut this wire because it's a bit long. And with these pliers, you're safe to cut the wire. These are hardened jaws. Do not use a pair of rail cutters. You will wreck them instantly trying to cut piano wire with it. But with these pliers, it's safe to do so. Like so. And now I'm going to bend the other wire, or the other angle, same way. I'm just going to hold, actually no, I'm going to hold here with the mark I put on the wire just on the edge of the jaw, like so, and then give this bent down there like that. Now, this is where neatness, neatness counts. Check the wire, you can see this is not exactly parallel, so when you want to make a little adjustment here, just squeeze it in, that looks better. Make sure that it, the, the wires are lined up this way, it's got a bit of a twist in it, easily fixed, this wire bends quite simply, like so. There, that's re relatively good there so now we have our spring wire simple as that and we're going to put this into the turnout through the two holes and then we're going to show you how to make some adjustments to make sure it's going to work correctly so we're just going to slide it down through the holes one there and one through there and push it in now you can see that that's not fitting very well We've, we don't have, uh, we've got too much space on the top here and they don't line up. That's where we want to make some adjustments. You don't want to force that down because it'll put too much pressure on the points. Very easy to fix. What we want to do is just close up this angle a little wee bit, like so. Just enough. So I'm just giving that a bit of a squeeze, like that. Now those two wires are closer together. The two legs of the wire, I guess you'd call it. And I'm going to try it again, down through the holes. Let's see how they work out. Just push that in there like that. And give it a push. Snap, snap. See how nice that works? Click, click. And that is holding very solid on there. You're not going to have any problem with this being open a little bit where a wheel can get into it. Same with the other direction. That's holding that nice and snug in there. If it, you're finding that when you put it in, it doesn't hold it, you want to open this angle up just slightly. What you want is a bit of pressure between the back of this one and the back of that um, wire, pushing away from each other onto the ties. That will cause the spring action. If you don't have enough of that, it just it won't lock. It'll just move left and right. But when you do get it just enough, uh, or just a slight bit of tension on there, it'll lock in there nice and easily like that. So now what we do is just snip these off. And I'm going to do that with a rotary tool in the in my uh, Dremel. Perfect. So now you can easily switch that turnout back and forth without using a switch machine. You can just touch it like that with your finger. Boom. It's nice and tight.